Hey, this is Zero at Review Zone HD bringing you a pretty late night review of Disgaea 4 A Promise Unforgotten, and you guys will have to forgive me if I pronounce that incorrectly. Uh, the last Disgaea for PlayStation 3 was released three and a half years ago, so it's been a pretty long wait for the sequel. I spent several hundred hours on the last game, played the game some on PSP, and also played for a very long time on the PlayStation 2 release of Disgaea 2. So needless to say, I am a fan of the game, I'm pretty knowledgeable on the series, although it's been a pretty long time since I played it. Now I'm bringing you guys this review at 6 o'clock in the morning, now you might be asking yourself, why would I be bringing a review at 6 in the morning? Well, this game came out at midnight and I scooped up the only copy my local GameStop had and played it through the night so I could put this together for you guys. Let's find out if it was worth staying up for. This game does support 1080p high definition and graphically it's a huge improvement from the last game in all aspects. There is a classic mode that you can switch to that basically makes all the characters pretty pixelated and ugly. It gives it an old school feel. So I'd certainly recommend playing on the current graphic setting that you start the game with and not the classic mode. Now the camera has always been sort of an issue on the previous games and this one also falls into that same category. With that said, 95% of the dungeons on the game you're not going to have any problems seeing the entire playing field. But every now and again you will come across that random dungeon that makes it a bit of a chore to move your characters around. But again, it's not that big of a deal because it doesn't happen that often. The cutscenes in the game look really well done. The combat animations are all awesome looking. But some of the backgrounds in the dungeons are pretty bland and ugly. Luckily the game is constantly evolving and changing the areas that you're in. So that really isn't that big of a deal either. So graphically, it's in pretty good shape. Sardines are the most ideal... Probably my favorite thing about the series, the Disgaea series, is it allows you to make the game as easy or as hard on yourself as you want it to be. If you grind your character's levels up, really spend time leveling up your gear, creating and recreating your characters, you can really do some damage on here. On that same note, if you keep those areas to a minimum in the game, the game can get pretty challenging. The most similar game I can compare this to would be Final Fantasy Tactics, which if you haven't played any of the previous Disgaea games but have played Tactics, you should know what you're getting into with this type of a game. While the last game had a really silly story, this one also falls into that same category. This one isn't as silly as the last one, but they do throw the amusing gag scenes in here and there. And I personally haven't paid too much attention to the stories in the previous games. This one was no exception. The story is kind of just there to push things along. Now, I'm sure there's some people out there that really get into learning about the different characters and the plot lines, which the game certainly has a lot of cutscenes and well thought out scripts, but for me it's just been about the combat, the loot collection, the leveling up, and the team building, and this game does not let you down in those categories. The individual character cap on this game is 9,999, which is pretty crazy. And just like an MMO, this is a game that never really ends, although it does have an ending. But you can easily pour hundreds of hours into this game as it throws random dungeons at you that are really varied to the point you really have to plan a new strategy for almost every level that you're in. The developers basically took everything that was good in the last game and put it in this game, but enhanced pretty much everything in some way or another and added a whole lot of new bells and whistles. Let's go ahead and get into some of those. They have added the ability to create your own pirate ship on this title and actually invade other gamers worlds online. That in itself is pretty cool. You can create your own custom maps that you can upload to the network and others can play on. That also is pretty awesome. They have added what's called the Cam Pain area, which is essentially your headquarters with all sorts of bells and whistles that is similar to the previous game's classroom area with a few upgrades. The last Disgaea for PlayStation 3 was a really well designed game and deep RPG and this one really didn't leave anything out from the last one, so if you enjoyed the last one you will without a doubt enjoy this title.
The Disguise series has always been well known for how deep the gameplay mechanics are and how much strategy is involved with everything you do on the game and this one does not disappoint in that regard. If you're the type of person that doesn't buy games very often and you're looking for something you can really sink some time into and you enjoy either strategy games or RPGs, you really can't go wrong with this title. While some may say the game can get a bit repetitive, I never really felt that way about the last games and I can't see this one falling into that category either. There's so many new features and positive things I could talk about with this game, but this is already most likely the longest review I've done so far, but it was certainly worth me staying up all night to play and bring you guys a review and I'm glad I did so. I'm enjoying this game so much that I'll be bringing you guys quite a few other videos for it, maybe some help videos as well, so if you're at all interested in this game, be sure to check back for those. This is Zero at Review Zone HD and I'll be seeing you guys soon.